Hi, everybody, and welcome to the much anticipated and much heralded conference summary. So the first thing I need to do is share my screen as these slides were only prepared about five minutes ago. So this is all happening in real time. And then I need to enable the chat so that Mark Carden can shout at me. So if everyone in the chat can let me know it's all working. That's great. So as I say, it's a, it's a real pleasure to uh, have the opportunity to do, this, uh, to do this summary again. And summary, which is described by Mark in the program as informal, opinionated, coherent, and plausible. So I'm only gonna do one of those, but I'll leave you to guess at the end which one. Uh, one of the drawbacks of being online is obviously I can't hear you laugh, which I'm sure that you just did. Um, so do feel free um, in the conference Q&A chat or in the discussion box to put a laugh emoji or to post that on Twitter. That will make me feel much better. So how would you sum up this conference? I think simply I would say, just wow. I mean, I don't know how many online meetings you've been to this year um, in the last 12 months and not to decry any of them, but this was a very different experience in every single way, in how engaging it was, um, in how interactive, in how interesting, uh, and just simply how involving for everybody that in a way just felt like R2R to me. Um, which is, which is quite something. So I thought you might like to know how this was done um, and to take a glimpse behind the scenes of making R2R a memorable online event. So this is the nerve center. This is what you didn't see. Um, this is the hundreds of people behind the scenes making this happen. All very calm, very relaxed, only very occasionally looking like this. In fact, five minutes to go, I would say, looking exactly like this when my screen share didn't work. So a massive, massive thank you. Um, I'm sure Mark will endorse this and say the same to the participants, uh, to all of the contributors who've just done an amazing job, not only and primarily with the content, but also in handling the technology and making it all seem so, so natural to our friends at Gigabox and Event Hub, to my colleagues on the advisory board uh, and to Mark, in case no one else would think to thank him. Um, this did take some vision to say we can do this in a way that's not a Zoom meeting um, and in a way that is really true to the spirit and the content and the principles of R2R as a face-to-face -face meeting. So, so just huge thanks to, to everybody who made this happen. So a summary um, is different and, and maybe not as easy or perhaps easier uh, on an online meeting. So R2R 2021 for me was actually R2R 2R. Now, back to Mark, he's rather precious about his branding. So he's probably looking at this now a little bit like this. So I apologize for ruining the brand by, for the purposes of my summary, calling it R2R 2R. So what do I mean? Well, as I sat through all of the incredible presentations and discussions, it, it made me think that, that we were collectively reflecting that in many ways we were rebalancing um, a lot of things, and I'll talk about what they are. And in the end, reasserting um, our value and reasserting our values as participants in the researcher to read an ecosystem of scholarly communications. So what did we reflect on? Um, indeed, in the last, in the last um, session, we reflected on, on COVID and obviously the huge impact on the way that, that we do the work that we do and the way that we don't do it, the way we might like to, face-to-face -face in our labs, in our offices, in our universities, in our offices, it just had a huge impact. Um, reflecting, I thought quite often on our careers, 
on the work that we do every day, on the personal balance between uh, life and work, between being a researcher or a publisher, being doing administration, being a teacher, and therefore the professional impact that, that we're making. We reflected a lot on funding uh, overall. I mean, funding as it flows into the whole ecosystem, not just funding from funders. Uh, policy, business models from publishers, and asking the question, and, and this is my word throughout this, do they truly support impact in the end, the reason why, they, why we show up to do what we're doing as researchers, um, as publishers, as teachers, as consultants, everybody in this, in this supply chain. And we reflected on the fundamentals that, that I think underpin a lot of the work that we do, um, our integrity and the integrity of, of, of research, um, peer review, um, recognition, and again, of impact. So rebalancing. Um, so for me, one of the most powerful themes throughout the conference was, was diversity, quality, diversity, and inclusion at, at every point and at every place in, in around the R to R circle. And I thought that, I thought that uh, Simone Raghavulu and Nicole Nugent's slides that are here were incredibly thought provoking because they represent um, quick wins and they represent a possible way forward. And, and I hope and think that many of us would have, would have stepped away from this presentation thinking, not just, yes, this is a good thing, but actually, what can I do? Um, and what am I going to do that's different? A lot of rebalancing thoughts around Global North and South, without us having a specific session around that this time, potentially. But I think in the context of the pandemic and the unequal effect, unequal effect that that's having around the world, I think there's a lot of thought about, particularly I was thinking of the of the research realities session where Osman was joining us from Khartoum and he was very, very clear about what he has and doesn't have with respect to, to tools, to resources um, and to the things he needs to do what he does. So a lot of, a lot of reflection on global North and South. China's interesting. I thought, I thought the reviews, the um, interviews, sorry, that Nico did were, were exceptionally good. Um, and, and the rebalancing here is, I think, a rebalancing within China, a rebalancing of internal policies on OA, rebalancing that will strengthen um, local journals, and a rebalancing that, that will um, make important adjustments to the higher education system I think the rebalancing is that all of those will make China an even bigger player on the global stage. Rebalancing of our expectations and our incentives. So what actually gets rewarded? Um, and if rewarding, so whether it's in an early career for an early career scientist, what should we expect will be rewarded? What do publishers get rewarded for over time? Um, is it distribution? Is it, is it impact? Um, and there was a lot of, of discussion as well, which I really liked around incentives, going back to equality, to diversity, what incentives are there to get those things right? Uh, integrity versus speed. I think the, the uh, I, Ivan Aransky's presentation on, on the first day, uh, I mean, this slide was actually pretty scary. Um, in some ways, why are papers retracted? Not that the retraction's bad, but raising questions about, about misconduct. Um, and again, coming back to, to the way that we behave, our personal impact and, and so on. And then obviously broader interest in the development of, of open access and the, the keynote address we had this afternoon, which I think raised a lot, a lot of issues and I'll come back to, the, to what was raised and why. But I think this is re really about the broader interests. Obviously, OA is not is not about one interest group. OA is about funders. It's about societies. It's about authors. It's about it's about readers. It's about it's about institutions. So we did, I think, spend a lot of time thinking about 
about how we rebalance, um, having reflected on the world over the last 12 months. And obviously we got, we got to vote, which is, which is awesome. Obviously there are no goodies and there are no baddies, um, but the polls and surveys I thought were, were an excellent way for us to see snapshots of the way that we think. I think the surveys that, uh, um, that um, Rob and Danny uh, did at the beginning, just, just so, so, so interesting. And, uh, and, and also us to vote on, on big issues. So, so thanks to all those who put, who put that together. So just to conclude, um, I think for me, the reasserting of value, the value of what we do from researcher to reader and the values that we hold in the way that we do that um, was the big thing that came through with a number of pillars. One was, is my sense of a generational shift. Maybe it's just me where I am in my, in my career, but that there was a change in the context and expectations and that with utter respect to everybody, many of the most interesting things I heard were from people of a, of a generation and a background that is certainly not mine. Um, and, and I welcome that generational shift. I think it will move a lot. Uh, another pillar of that reasserting is global balance, global balance of opportunity, of access, of resources. I loved the work that was done on language and that is a barrier to publishing in, in global journals if you're not English is not your first language and rebalancing those. Um, inclusion, um, nobody excluded on any basis from being part of this world that we're that we're working in today um, at this conference, whether that's economic um, or not. And reasserting, maybe this is just me, impact as a public good. So reasserting that in the end, the work that we're doing is intended to make the world a better place. Um, and that's the outcome of science and scientific research. That's not intended to be Pollyanna-ish, um, but, but I do believe that, that focusing all of our work and our thinking on are we having the impact that we want to have is critical. Um, and it really, it really came through. And quickly, just some of the drivers that really came through to me, I mean, transparency um, in the metric session from the workshop, but also you know, elsewhere, transparency around policy and mandate, um, what is really behind it? Why are we proposing a particular, say, rights retention policy? Is that truly transparent? Transparency around peer review, um, all that came through. Um, open access, open science, um, and the sense that we, we own this collectively. There is no, I hope, sense that there are proponents and uh, opposers of open access and open science. It's simply a collective effort to make it happen. Um, opportunity, which is fairly distributed to all. And then questions, I think the, the, the sustainability of the scholarly comms ecosystem, the way it's funded, the business models that underpin it. Um, my question, where are we on the maturity curve of that? And are we perhaps driven by this next generation about to tip into another, another model overall? And the importance of partnerships, but there's a, there's a but here. And the but was, I don't know if anyone else picked up, this is also from Ivan Aransky, when he said scientific publishing is tribal. Um, and my question is, does it, does it have to be tribal? Um, and I'm thinking here again, just as an example of the peer review debate, which was stunning and the four proponents and our moderator were amazing. In the end, in the end, we established the two positions. We didn't necessarily begin to talk about what's the solution because both have merit, um, rewarding those who do the work and, and protecting the integrity and the quality of peer review, peer review both have huge value. Um, and I think again, to the workshops, which I think with the output for the workshops was stunning. So many of those, um, whether it was uh, academic writing, whether it was uh, the anti-racism and the five Ds, whether it was metrics to support, um, to support OA, that all of these seem to be reaching towards a conclusion and trying to get past tribalism and towards something that is much more cohesive, not kumbaya and let's sit around having a brown bag lunch, but 
are there times when we take positions which are not actually moving us forward, but we're simply defending them? Um, and no reflection on anything that happened here. I mean, scientific publishing as a whole. So what to do about all of these big problems in the one minute I have left in my session? And the answer quite clearly is the way to solve these big problems is to complete your R to R delegate survey. So if you haven't done it, please do. So with that, I will stop sharing my screen and say thanks very much to everybody and pass to Mark Carden. Right, I'm waiting for a message to say go from Claire because you're not allowed to speak until Claire says go. Yeah, Claire says talk. Okay, hello everybody. Um, great. Well, thank you, Mark, for that uh, that wrap up of the uh, of the uh, whole program. Uh, there was some talk on the chat about whether he was going to actually do the wrap up as a wrap, but I, we, we had a close shave there. Um, and he didn't wrap the whole thing, so that was good. Um, I also feel a bit bad. He, he, uh, thank you, Mark, for your kind words about uh, the, the conference and the organisation. I feel a bit bad sabotaging your talk now by, uh, by tweeting that we've been really good at not having any long periods of dead air. And then so Mark had a, a technical glitch, which those 400 people you could see in the studio ran around and, and fixed, and so we were in, we were in good shape. Um, I have almost nothing to say, really. This is kind of the end of the conference. I just really want to take a moment to, to thank a few people and, and just wrap up. So literally um, to say that um, Mark again very kindly said it was about vision of doing this. I kind of feel it was more like um, wild ambition, unreasonable wild ambition that could, took, brought us to this place. But I was very determined that we would, we would have a real R2R and I somehow uh, coerced about 50 people into getting together to deliver that. Um, so I want to really, really thank the contributors who all uh, presented and moderated and made it all work uh, so wonderfully well. I'd like to thank the technical team and the admin team who did a great job there. Of course, the sponsors, again, the sponsors behind me here, uh, who really made a big difference to the economics of the event. Um, very crucial. And you know, I've been saying for nine months that online costs as much to do properly as uh, a real conference and a real venue, and it's turning out to be true. Um, so it's been uh, critical that the sponsors have supported us. And then last, of course, but not least, is you who supported us so very well. So all of the uh, participants of the conference, which is what really makes r actually work and not be a series of lectures to an audience, but be a conversation and a real gallery. So uh, normally at this point, we would go around the corner of the pub, but I'm afraid that's not an option. So each to your own way of, uh, of celebrating the end of R2R. But let me just say thank you very much. Tell all your friends if it's been a huge success. Send us an email if you don't think it's been a huge success. And um, we'll see each other next year. Thank you very much.